Shalom from Israel. I am Shira Sokoram, and I want to welcome you to Israel Frontline, your guide to Israel and the Middle East. We want to give you a biblical perspective on the political and social current events in Israel as they happen. What you will hear on this program will contrast sharply with the biased reporting we are receiving from most of the world media. This is the second in a four-part series about Jerusalem. On today's program, we will talk about the Temple Mount, examining why it has become one of the main conflict centers between Jews and Muslims. On the program today, how does the Bible describe the Temple Mount? What is a religious narrative? Recent events on the Temple Mount. Later in the program, our panel of guests will share their views about the Temple Mount and the constant unrest associated with it. If you tuned into the news anytime lately, you may have heard about clashes between Muslims and Israeli security forces on the Temple Mount. What might appear to be a spontaneous grassroots movement is actually rooted in 4,000 years of Jewish history and almost 1,500 years of religious conflict between Muslims and Jews. Today, we bring you the story behind these events and why to date this is one of the most explosive political and religious locations in the world. Three thousand years ago, during the 10th century BC, there was a great celebration at the opening of King Solomon's Jewish temple on Mount Moriah. Before that time, the mount was a raised hill to the north of the city of David, and the Jewish people had never had a permanent temple for God, but only a temporary tent. The book of 1 Kings describes in detail the Spirit of God entering the Holy of Holies in the center of the temple, an act witnessed by many of the people of Israel for whom this place became the habitation in which God dwells. But Solomon's temple was destroyed by the Babylonians in 586 BC and then rebuilt by those who returned from Babylon with Ezra and Nehemiah and later renovated and expanded by King Herod, only to be destroyed once more in 70 AD. This very temple of Herod is the one Jesus, whose name is Yeshua in Hebrew, taught and prayed in, and was the center of culture and religious life in his day. Since the destruction of the temple, 40 years after the death and resurrection of Yeshua, the Temple Mount has been under the control of various empires. Indeed, it stood in desolation for several hundred years and was turned into a garbage dump by the Byzantines. Then, when the Muslim Empire reached Jerusalem in the 7th century, they erected the first of several mosques to be built on the Mount over the years. They were followed by the Crusaders, who built a church on the Mount followed by the Ayubians and the Mamluks and other Muslims who destroyed any evidence of a Christian presence on the Mount. They rebuilt mosques that remain on top of the Temple Mount to this day. For a short period in history, the Temple Mount was the most holy place to Islam, and Muslims from around the world prayed in the direction of Jerusalem. Today, it's the third most holy place to Islam, following Mecca and Medina. Ironically, Muslims who pray on the Temple Mount now face Mecca with their backs to the mosque, which sits on the place where the Lord once dwelt. The Mamluks were replaced by the Turkish Ottomans, who maintain Muslim control of the Temple Mount for four centuries until the British Empire assumed control after World War I. Throughout the thousands of years of exile and destruction of the Jewish temple, there was always a remnant of Jews who prayed near the mount, facing it, and at times, 
even being allowed to pray on the site, but always as a minority, often an oppressed one. After the State of Israel was established during the Independence War, the Temple Mount was captured by the Jordanian army. The Jewish people in Israel who had made it back to the land after 2,000 years in exile found themselves barricaded just a few hundred yards from the place that symbolized more than anything else their faith and their nation. For 19 years, the Jewish people could only pray and hope to one day return to the Mount. And then it happened in 1967, when again the Arab nation sought to throw Israel into the sea, Israel suddenly and unexpectedly conquered the old city of Jerusalem along with many other territories in the Six-Day War. Israeli paratroopers entered the old city and surged toward the Western Wall. When they arrived, Rabbi Shlomo Gorin, the chief military rabbi, pulled out a shofar, put on his prayer shawl, and for the first time in almost 2,000 years, led a prayer at the Jewish-controlled Western Wall at the foot of the Temple Mount. After the war, the Israeli government signed a status quo agreement with the Waqf, the Jordanian Muslim Holy Site authorities, guaranteeing that Muslims would be allowed to continue praying on the Temple Mount. The Waqf is run de facto by the Jordanian government, which had occupied the old city for 19 years. Israel and the Jordanians have a special relationship, especially since both countries signed a peace agreement in 1994. Part of the difficulty with keeping the peace and order on the Mount is rooted in the sensitive partnership with the Jordanians. The 1967 agreement states that the Islamic Waqf would control the civil and religious matters on the Mount, that Jews would not be allowed to pray on the Mount, but could visit along with members of all religions. Military security would be in Israeli hands. The Jews began praying at the courtyard of the Western Wall bordering the Temple Mount, and that arrangement has been maintained until now. Christianity derives much of its foundational principles from Judaism because its belief system comes from both the Old and New Testaments. Islam, which only came into existence in the seventh century, has many beliefs and traditions that are, in a way, also influenced by the Bible. But the Old and New Testament stories are jumbled and rewritten, with Muhammad and his writings about his God, Allah, coming out on top. This rewriting of biblical facts is apparent in Muslim traditions but more so expresses itself in Islam's seizing Jewish holy sites and making them its own. In the Muslim mind, possessing coveted sites and reorientating them becomes a symbol of Islamic religious dominance, and the Temple Mount is a perfect example of that. Violence often erupts on and around the Temple Mount, Clashes between Muslims and Israeli security forces have become a regular happening and have included the throwing of rocks, fireworks, and multiple violent attacks on Jews in the Old City. Today, Muslims see the Temple Mount as strictly an Islamic holy site and loudly proclaim Jews have never possessed it and will never be allowed to pray there. The Israeli government has tried to prevent the violence from developing into a countrywide conflict. Radical Palestinian Muslim organizations have even paid young Arab men to stay on the mount and to smuggle in weapons and stones to be used against the Israeli security forces or to throw down on Jewish worshipers at the Western Wall. According to Israeli intelligence reports, 
Some of these funds have come from the Iranian and Saudi governments. Much of the current unrest is attributed to Arab leaders outside of Israel stirring up a new intifada, a Palestinian civil uprising. We are not against Arabs. We love the Arab people. The tragedy is that most of them are imprisoned in an ideology called Islam, a religion of hating those whose faith is different than theirs, while loving death especially by martyrdom in Allah's line of duty. Every Muslim is committed to spread Islam by subterfuge or the sword. The Arab people need freedom to choose life through the God of the Bible and his son, Yeshua. If you look at the Temple Mount through biblical eyes, it's clear why there would be conflict between Judaism and Islam. God's Word specifically speaks of restoring His kingdom in Jerusalem. Yeshua will return to the Mount of Olives and walk onto the Temple Mount. The God of Israel will set His abode once again on that mountain. As for Muslims, their current presence on the Mount and their exclusive right to pray there to Allah proves their prophet was the true one and ours, the God of Israel, and his son Yeshua have been defeated. That is why a practical argument regarding the Temple Mount or the city of Jerusalem does not work. This is a debate over the validity of God's promises as recorded through the mouths of the prophets, apostles, and Yeshua. The Temple Mount is the pivotal point on which those who promote an agenda contrary to God's plan apply their pressure. When you pray and think over the Temple Mount, over God's city, Jerusalem, bear in mind that this is far more than a political debate. What you are witnessing is two colliding beliefs, the belief that the word of God is true versus the one that claims it is false. They each are fighting for their kingdom to come. We all know how this story ends. Here is God's promise to Jerusalem. I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the Lord's decree. He said to me, you are my son. Today, I have become your father. Ask me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. Stay tuned. We will be right back with our panel of Israeli guests who will answer some tough questions about the Temple Mount. Maos Israel Ministries is a Messianic Jewish nonprofit organization based in Tel Aviv. We exist to be a witness of the good news to the people of Israel through outreach, discipleship, and raising up godly leaders. We translate and publish outstanding faith books in Hebrew and powerful testimony books to reach non-believers. We have a Hebrew outreach website with original media content produced by our team. We support the Hebrew-speaking congregation Tiferet Yeshua in Tel Aviv. We sponsor and host seminars and conferences. We support our Arab Christian brothers who love Israel and the God of Israel. Our I Stand with Israel Fund serves as a benevolence outreach, meeting the practical needs of Israeli believers. Our dream is to see God's promises fulfilled until the day when all Israel will be saved. Welcome back to Israel Frontline. We will now turn to our panel of Israeli guests for their perspectives and thoughts about Jerusalem. Today in the studio with us are Mati Shoshani, Director of Operations for TBN Israel from Jerusalem. Shani Ferguson, co-founder of Yeshua Israel Ministries, also from Jerusalem. And Israel Pachter, pastor of Beit Halel Messianic Congregation from Ashdod, in southern Israel. Welcome to the show. Mati, 
whose decision was it for Jews not to be able to pray on the Temple Mount after 1967 when Israel conquered the old city? And why was it made? Well, this is a bit tough, so let's just be fair. First of all, there was no official government decision. So in the summer of 1967, when Israel conquered the old city, including the Temple Mount, Moshe Dayan, who was the defense minister, decided... Moshe Dayan, the very, very famous general who had one eye. Yes, he had a patch. Uh, very famous person who, by the way, was pretty much an atheist. He decided not to go up to the Temple Mount for security reasons or religious reasons. It wasn't an agreement. The government didn't decide on the topic. This was his personal decision. And the chief military rabbi, Shlomo Gorin, at the same time tried to go up to the Temple Mount. He actually set up offices for the, the government or the military And part of the uh, reason they didn't, rabbinate. they didn't have that decision because they weren't expecting to get the Temple Mount. Yeah, Everything this was all a, big, so fast. all a big surprise to them. And, and as happens often in the Middle East, temporary decisions become long-term decisions. So he said, let's just keep everything quiet and not go up, and here we are. It's been 40-something years, and we haven't gone up to the Temple Mount, Temple Mount to pray, just to visit. Right. Uh, what do you think, Israel? Do you think that Jewish uh, people should be able to go up and pray at the Temple Mount? Oh, definitely. You know, we have deep roots uh, in the Temple Mount, and uh, we've been speaking about archaeology. So if you go down, a few levels down, you will find lots of uh, evidence of uh, Israeli Jewish presence Jewish presence, right way to say, uh, in the Temple Mountains. And of course, Bible covering all the stories about Temple Mountains, right. about Jerusalem. So about why are the area. Jews today, today, Moshe Dayan's not around anymore, why are the Jewish people not allowed to go up on the mount? First of all, they have, they have a sign that says that they're not allowed to go up there. Who and put that pray. sign up? To, Israel did. To pray, but we're, Israel we're put up a visit. sign that said, yes. Yeah, we're allowed to visit. You're technically, but, but if you just read the sign, it just says, like, no Jews allowed on the Temple Mount. No, so, but that's no, no. A, for a different okay. reason altogether. So the reason was because the uh, chief rabbi of the time decided that per chance that someone were to step on where the Holy of Holies used to be, then it would be somehow desecrating it. I don't understand the reasoning of that because there's, there's Muslims praying up there. So like at what point is well, it was a Jew? It was a political reason. And they came out with that, you so know, that was decree their excuse. because it was decided that politically it would be dangerous. So they said, let's find a religious reason. So you think that's the, that's that the reason? That was the case, the, the, to prevent hordes of Jews from trying to get up to the Temple Mount and pray because reasonably speaking, any Jew after we conquer back the Temple Mount, after thousands of years of Gentile control, would want to go up and pray on it. So they said, wait a minute, we have to do something about that. And then they said, oh, it's religiously Made complicated. Some, sort of religion excuse. some, you know, nonsense uh, so excuse. It's, so it was very religious rabbis who said, we do not want Jews to go up there and pray because they might go where the Holy of Holies was, where the presence of God was, right? And, and only the, the high priest can do that. Exactly. So let's just, you know, pull, it, pull back the, the boundaries a bit so we don't go up. Okay, I but that's the, changed. I think that it's significant because... You know, people think that when, in 1967, when, when the, it, Jerusalem became unified, that was somehow this fulfillment of, like, Israel taking back all the land. Dominion and there's some, the land. yeah, some sort of dominion. But really, it really hasn't happened. Like, it sort of happened because, you know, it, Jerusalem is unified. But the very fact that the Temple Mount is not under Jewish control and there is a foreign god worshipped on that mount to me is very significant and something that a lot of people miss when they're right. kind of doing their charts of the end times. And all we that. may be in process, but we ain't there yet. Well, th there's more to it besides that. I mean, a large portion of why today, specifically in 2014, Israel isn't really you know, assuming control of the Temple Mount is political and related actually to Jordan and not the Palestinians. Yes. And I'll explain... Yeah. The waqf, which is the religious Muslim control of the Temple Mount, yes. is not the Palestinians. Many people think, oh, it's the Palestinians or the Arabs. It's actually the Jordanian government. And Israel and the Jordanians signed a peace agreement in the 90s, and that peace agreement stipulates that Israel maintains that control in the hands of the Jordanians. So today, when you have riots on the Temple Mount and Israel you know, holds back, doesn't go up, doesn't send in the troops, the reason is the Jordanians, not the Palestinians. So we could have World War III, right, over the, mount, over the Temple I don't know, Mount. You know. I, I don't know, but there's a lot of tension. 
Yeah. Uh, there's a huge Not amount of tension. people that have World War III. And too many hands in, you know, in, the, in the pot, you know, in, in this cauldron trying to, to control and, and play with it. I th right. I think also, just so you have a, a general visual, because people think of the Temple Mount as the gold dome, and that's really not the center. No. That they, you have, there's a silver domed mosque next to it, and that is their holy spot, and then right. this, this other place the is And right. everybody said that Jerusalem is a, a place of three religions. But uh, it's not really fair to even say that because Jewish people have hard time to come and pray in their most holy place. By that, yeah, by the wall, you know, a little bit you know, out, but still not in. So, so uh, Israel, do you, do you think that the media is fair about the conflict, um, you know, compared to maybe conflicts in other areas? Yeah, many of Israeli politicians, they say that uh, the world have double standard for Israel. When it's come to Israel, it's always double standard, or most of the time. And I pretty agree with that. You know, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we had riots in Jerusalem, different demonstrations. Mm -hmm. And we had about, uh, my opinion, 40, 50, maybe watching TV, 40, 50 uh, people who throw stones on the Israeli soldiers. All the media, BBC, CNN, they spoke a lot about that. Same week, really same week, uh, over the border here in Syria, over 100 civilians died, women and children, no uh, media coverage. So here are stones, there is uh, hundreds of people dying. Uh, I had a pastor from Ath Athens, he came and he saw the news and he said to me, you speaking, this is riots? You know, they shall come to, Atuna, to Athens and, say, and, and see what is riots. So uh, it's just one of the examples. There is more in America, more in France and uh, England. Of course, we see a disproportional coverage of media. A little thing happened in Jerusalem, all the world watching. Right. But at the same time, I can think of biblical significance of this story because mm -hmm. we are on the preparation. You know, Jesus is soon to come. The nations uh, should have come and do their part in the last time you right. Know, right. scenario. Right. Shani, part of a democratic narrative around the world is freedom of religion and the ability of people to pray wherever and however they wish. Both Jewish and Arab Israelis are permitted to pray wherever they want in Israel. So, what is the status of Jews in other Arab countries? Can they pray wherever they want? If I can pull that question out just a little bit more, I think if you look historically, when a particular religion is in control of a country or region, you can take a look at uh, Christianity in the Dark Ages. Um, yes. There was not freedom of religion in or religion was the state. or, or yeah. It, yeah, yeah, the state, and you had to believe a certain way. And if you didn't, then you were either exiled or whatever. So um, I think historically, the precedent that there is today in Israel, it, it, it is unprecedented because to have a country that's so strong, so has such a large percentage of religious people and still has a freedom of religion is very unique. That, it is unique. I, I'm gonna say, I think, I think absurd is the fitting word for the situation in Israel right now. I mean, if, if you think about it, we are, the Jews are the religious majority in the country and we have chosen willingly to forfeit control of the Temple Mount. And not only that, we're, I mean, we're not just allowing you know, lack of religious freedom for the first time in history, you know, any other religion in this area has not allowed freedom of religion. If it was the Christians, if it was the Muslims, there was not freedom of religion, there was a religion of the conqueror or the ruler. And for once, the Jews controlled the, the nation for the first time in several thousand years, and we chose to relinquish control of the Temple Mount. It's just this absurd reality where, you know, we should be able to pray and we're choosing not to. We're choosing not to go up to the Temple Mount. Having said that, in Arab nations, I, I remember um, discussing online with someone about um, how the Islamic nations do not allow freedom for other religions, and someone was pointing out Turkey to me, because they said, yeah, Turkey is largely Islamic, and look, they have all this freedom, whatever. And then within a few years, everything collapsed, and it became what it is. So even if there is some sort of temporary freedom because, uh, because they're well, kind of, the, you know, trying like out a liberal Muslim country democracy and, you know, trying out right. the, maybe maybe temporarily. But but largely the the nature of an Islamic state is that there there is only yes. a and very Turkey has lifestyle definitely gone into a very, right. which, very, which was inevitable. They were using democratic means to arrive at an Islamic leadership. And then they. Yes. Get off Israel, the train, so to say. I have a question for you. What's the spiritual explanation to this battle raging over the Temple Mount. Yeah, I just touched it. We see the Bible, we see the promises about Zion, 
about restoration of Zion, restoration of Israel, Messiah coming back to rule from Jerusalem, and the nations will come to worship King of Kings. So uh, when I look what's happening around Jerusalem, it looks like we are approaching, we are coming closer. Uh, so there is a plan of God for all the nations come to Jerusalem when Israel ruling uh, over Jerusalem, when Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, as a king sitting there. This is why uh, we have all, all the tensions, which has been speaking about unproportional coverage of media, because yeah. it's, it's all on the way. All these stories, they're coming. And also on some level, as long as Israel is not in their proper place, per se, the promises of God, then, then the, the enemy, the, the devil, enemy, the, yeah. they can just say, you know, your God just simply isn't big enough to do it. I think people from the outside don't realize this, you know, what you're mentioning, this idea of the, the religions battling each other. And when you see that, if you think through the eyes of like Islam, as long as they have dominance or control, whatever, however it looks at the Temple Mount, they're preventing the Jewish Temple. And as long as, you know, th that's sort of the way everything is, is working. They're thinking about preventing. It's not just my own religion. It's preventing your religion, your faith, your God in an extension of fulfilling his, his prophecy. And there's a lot more to that, of course, than that. But the Temple Mount is this great example of how they're trying, trying on, like a, on a micro level to fight a strategic battle, to prevent like, you know, making a, a statement or any progress of our religion or our faith or our God in this case. So in simple language... My God, Allah, is bigger than your God, the God of Israel. Temple. Right, yeah. exactly. Well, that's all the time we have for today's program of Israel Frontline. Thank you for watching, and we hope we were able to give information that will help you pray for Israel and the Jewish people. For more of my articles about Israel, sign up to the free monthly Maoz Israel Report at maozisrael.com org slash sign up. Please join us next week for the third in our four episode series about Jerusalem. We will talk about East and West Jerusalem and whether the city should be divided as part of the peace process. On behalf of our team and myself, blessings and shalom from Tel Aviv. The Maoz Israel Report app brings the free monthly Maoz Israel Report publication right to your fingertips. All the reports in all available languages, videos and bonus photos, all in one place, on your tablet or smartphone. Download the free app today and get the insider's perspective of the way things really are in Israel. A good book can make a real difference in a believer's life. The goal of Maoz Hebrew Books Division is to bring great faith books to Israeli readers in their language. We translate, edit, typeset and print these books in Hebrew and then make them available in congregations across Israel.